Hey guys, what's up? We're back. A new week, a new podcast. This week, I have Hi, I'm Ghost joining me on the Lizzie Jane podcast. If you are familiar with bass music, dubstep, EDM in general, you definitely know who Hi, I'm Ghost is, especially after their hit single, Death Rail, in 2019. This year, they have been taking the touring circuit by storm. Hi, I'm Ghost is actually a duo. You have Nathan, who does full-time touring and also works on the music. And then you have Tiago, which really works on the branding side of things, a lot of the production. It was super awesome to speak to them about their dynamic as a duo, how it feeds into touring versus working on music versus staying creative staying innovative and staying fresh. You've recently seen High M Ghost on lineups everywhere with Excision. They are doing their headline tour that was rescheduled because of COVID. They're hitting all the cities now, selling out massive shows. So happy for the both of them. They have worked their fucking asses off and it's so cool to see them shine. Um, was great to talk to Nathan. Don't forget, you get this episode ad-free only on my lovely Patreon. I do one-on-one -on -one lessons. We do sample packs, tutorials. Make sure to go over my Patreon and check that out. But the best thing you can can do if you like the podcast, you're learning stuff from the podcast, you enjoy listening to some of your favorite artists speak shop and their skill set and advice for up and comers is just share the podcast. Tag me, tag the podcast, tag the artists who we're featuring for the week and just spread the word because that's the most that you can do. Don't forget to join the Discord as well. Always linked in the description of the shows where you can get exclusive access, stuff with my Patreon. We have a great little growing group there that we talk about the podcast guests all the time. You can ask some questions to future guests coming on and much more. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have been having a killer week. This was an awesome, quick little podcast. Hi, I'm Ghost, Lizzie Jane, new podcast. Let's go. The show today was brought to you by Vitaplur E Boost Gum. With no pill to take or powders to mix, Vitaplur eBoost Gum is a first-of-its-kind energy rave supplement that provides magnesium, electrolytes, and antioxidants while you chew. Vitaplur is the perfect complement to my active lifestyle, whether it's at the festival, on the road touring, or hitting the gym. Chew Vitaplur and dance with confidence. Use code LizzieJane for 10% off any order. All right, Nathan. Hi, Lizzie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so glad we finally got to make this happen. I know. We've been trying to do it for forever. Like almost a year later, Forbidden Kingdom. 100%. Coming around again. We were just talking about how fucking hot that was. It was stupid hot. Yeah. Um, Florida, there's a reason why I moved here. Well, yes. I'll just put that out there. You're here on tour. Yep. First headlining tour? E e no. No. No, okay. we did have one headlining tour, but it got canceled two days in because of COVID. Oh. That, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> I feel like so the, the much. First, the first, the yeah. first tour that's actually happened. Which is which is so exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that as an artist you fight to build that momentum to be yeah. able to do yeah. something like that, yeah. and you're playing like big rooms. Yes, which is awesome. It's been great. Which is amazing, and you yeah. have YDG as support, which uh, is WID. or WID, WID, WID as support, wid, wid. and. That's like super sick that you're bringing along people as well. It's not just it's yeah. not just locals, mm -hmm. and tonight you're playing at Club Vinyl. Yes, for uh, bass ops, which, which is amazing. I've heard it's in the basement and fucking wild. Yeah, so. I've never played there before, but I flew out here a few months ago to see Wales play there. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so it was a great time when I saw him play there. Yeah, so I'm excited. It's gonna be great. I know, yeah. like a lot of local artists in the scene are definitely coming out like mm -hmm. high zombie like all those yeah, guys yeah, yeah. he's coming out tonight so it should be a good time mm -hmm. um just going back i know there's two of you yes. in high end ghost yes. there's a lot of duo acts that i think about like barely alive mm -hmm. like adventure club yeah. where you kind of either have two people who produce and DJ, or you have like one person who's doing the producing and one person who's doing the dj and yeah. touring explain to me that dynamic that you guys have like chosen to take in your project it's a long story but it, originally we both toured together okay and then as time went on 
we just realized with how busy we were getting on the touring side, if we both tour, no music would ever get done. And, you know, we still do get together maybe twice, three times a year to write together mm -hmm. and have a good time in the studio. Yeah. But I'm the one doing most of the touring now. And then we do festivals together. That's amazing because he was at Lost Lands. Yes, he was. Yeah, which which obviously for those big events, you mm -hmm. should definitely both be together. Yeah. Would you say that, like, do you all send projects back and forth? Or is it like um, an uneven balance because you're touring all At the, the time. moment, the way it's working is he, he's working on music all the time and then sending me stuff and I'm giving feedback and awesome. restructuring things here and there and just giving input. Yeah. But I'm so busy touring. No. I mean, it's, it's oh, my four, God. four days a week and then I get home and I sleep for a day and then a day, you know, talking to management, figuring out what we're doing for the upcoming week. And then the next day you're packing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you have to take that day to like rejuvenate mm -hmm. and rest. Or you're just like going down a very slippery slope. Yeah, no, of a it's hill. definitely rough. Because I feel like a lot of people don't understand. Not only are you going from a very packed room to like a hotel room alone, yeah, where you know you're just calling your significant other, you're calling your friend, mm -hmm. and it's just like this weird high versus low emotion. Yeah. But then sometimes you can't even sleep because mm -hmm. your plane is at five a.m. the next morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's a lot. So are you? I know with like airlines now because of like cancellations that have mm -hmm. happened. I've been very lucky with stuff. that. I haven't had any cancellations. That's yet. amazing. And do you usually get like the first flight out or are you not going to really, kill yourself like really that? It really depends. I, I've become nicer to myself the past year. As I used to do the 5 a.m. flights out right after the show. But like tomorrow my flight out I think is at 6 p.m. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. No. It gets I, I was doing the, the 4 a.m. flights out for 5 a.m. flights out forever. It's, it's, it's even, it's almost like even worse to close your eyes and sleep for one hour versus like not sleeping at all. No, it's definitely worse. Because then you get like almost to that REM cycle and mm -hmm. it's like, never mind, your alarm yeah. goes off, you better make it to yeah. the airport. No, for sure. And you're someone who like, you do have your tour support, but you know, you don't have a TM, you've got yeah. everything really sitting on your shoulders, like as far as DIY yeah. handling mm -hmm. things, would you say that it's definitely a bit more stressful, like handling merch and handling, like you handle oh, your yeah. dancing. No, and no. I stuff. mean, I have a great uh, manager team that does all that awesome. for me. Awesome. Okay. Um, but a lot of the day of show stuff, my, my day to day still handles a lot of it, but I'm the one actually physically here in person yeah. having to do the actions. I mean, they're doing all the talking and then go do this. Yes. You know? Yeah. Which and it's still, it works, but definitely tiring and stressful it's like this accountability that's kind of on your shoulders yeah 100%. Where, where there's no one saying like hey you've mm -hmm. got time to go knocking yeah. on your door and and that's cool it definitely takes a certain type of individual i feel to do it on your own yeah yeah it's it's it's, rough. It, it's definitely it's rough. rough and you've been you guys have been touring since i met you on the snail store in 2018 yeah we were touring before that actually too for I think this is year five. That's amazing. So tell me a bit about your journey as far as how long Haim Ghost has been around. Okay. Haim Ghost started six years ago. It was just me. Okay. But it was like okay. happy. I called it happy trap. It was like marshmallow music. Oh, nice. Okay. And anyways, from that, I put out, I think, three songs. And I got signed to uh, Circle Talent back in the day. Nice. And yeah. then... Me and Tiago were really good friends from video games. And then he ended up coming out to where I lived because we just wanted to work on music together. And we started helping each other so much with each other's projects that at some point we're like, you know, maybe we should just do one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, which one was doing better at the time. So that's how we merged together to become High on Ghosts as it is now. Uh, amazing. And yeah. you guys have definitely, like taken not only like has your music had a had a forefront of like the dubstep culture and the dubstep yeah. scene really digging into like I think of like Death Rail I think of mm -hmm. like those early single hits that you had yeah. that just were like massively played by like A tier artists yeah, like, yeah, across sure. the world which is mm -hmm. amazing and then also you know it's very rare that I see somebody make like that good caliber quality of like dubstep hits which is hard to mm -hmm. like accomplish yeah and then also have the branding like yes. also which is yes. i know such a huge part yeah no it's a ginormous part and did you guys when you started i know you've gone through like a few like quote-unquote like rebrands where you've had like a yeah. new ghost mm -hmm. and you've had a new x y and z mm -hmm. how did the name come about and then how did that translate into like we're gonna have this little 
like Ghostbusters ghost on our shoulder all the, the time. The name came from, there was a video game player that we both really liked. He was a League of Legends streamer. Oh, and, okay. And, uh, yeah. Because I originally the project was just called Ghost, but it was, it was G-H-S-T. Okay. And then me and Tiago both loved this video game guy named Hi, I'm Gosu. And I'm like, fuck yeah. We're just going to, Hi, I'm Ghost. And then the character is based off my youngest brother, Zephyr. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. They add, like, the attitude and the personality. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like a whole story. It mm -hmm. reminds me of kind of like those early Michael Jackson videos where they would have, like, almost like a short movie mm -hmm. before it would actually go into yeah. the music video. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, you've created, like, a whole world for this ghost. We've tried, yeah. We're, yeah. We're doing it. And, and you definitely see it. And I know, like... As far as, like, Tiago said, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah. Okay, as far as Tiago said, like, he's super into the visual aspects. Yes. And and do you, do you guys create your visuals yourself? No, no, okay. no, no. Um, Actually, John Wynn helps a lot with the visual aspects of Hermes. Oh, nice. Not, not, like, physically doing it. Yes. But he helps both me and Tiago and the team a lot with, like, the idea making, blah, blah, blah. But we have a pretty solid team now. We work with uh, Milligram. It does all of our 3D visuals. Yeah. And then... All the Blender stuff. All, all the yeah. Blender stuff, all that, which has really helped bring the ghost more to life in a way yeah. that we wanted it to be. And then he just changed his name. I don't know what his new name is, but the guy that does like all of our artworks uh, used to go by Paranoid. Oh, I've, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, new, yeah. That but I, he name. just changed his name. I don't know what it is, but... Oh, that's sick. Yeah. But yeah. he does all of our illustrations, blah, blah, blah. Well, you guys have just always... Like, I know you've worked... You don't have an exclusive contract with Disciple, do you? No. So I know, but I know you've done a lot of releases with them. We didn't do that many. We did like two. Really? Yeah. Yeah, people put us in the Disciple boat, which I love all the Disciple guys. I know. I love, but we did Gimmick to Win It, Gimmick to Win It 2. Is that it? Yes. No fucking way. We, I, I think we did a few of the comps. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe it was like Oh, wait. System. And we did Game of Ghosts. Okay. So three. So, so, so three and then like maybe a few comps. Yeah. Okay. But, but most of our songs in our group But not released. like the other Disciple guys as far as their no, releases being exclusive. No, no. So then have you, I know Death Row came out on Slug. Yes. And then have you all just independently released quite a bit? Yeah, a majority of our songs have been self-released. Like Spooky Rhythm was self-released. Yep. Um, all the songs that got us going were all self-released. Every Halloween. I remember mm -hmm. before I even knew you. Yeah. That would be in that Halloween set. Yeah. I remember like hearing that shit for the first time. I was like, wow, that'd be dope to play on mm -hmm. Halloween. And it's always gone like You've just taken the whole ghost image. Like, when you think of you guys, like, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think of your face or Tiago's yeah. face. I think of the ghost, which, yeah. which obviously is what you want. Like, no, that's, for sure. that's like, the icon. I feel yeah. like, especially in electronic dance music now, it's, I use, like, resin as an example. Mm -hmm. Kind of, like, when you think of the name, you see the image. Yeah, and, yeah. And that definitely is something that you guys have successfully conquered. Yeah, people love the ghost. I mean, we love the ghost, too, but it's been amazing, like, all over the United States. I've seen... At least 200 yeah. ghost tattoos, easily. That's amazing. Which is crazy. Holy shit. Yeah. How does that feel to be like, hey, like, uh, are it's, they it's just, like, like, tattooed on us? It's, like, the most amazing feeling in the world. And also weird at the same time, because yeah. it's this thing that me and Tiago created in a bedroom. And now it's on people's bodies. Yeah. Which is awesome. Which is crazy. It's amazing, but... Is this, like, the first time that obviously, you know, everybody had shit ruined by COVID, which mm -hmm. just fucking sucked. But is this the first time that you're really seeing a very dedicated fan base on, like, the forefront of, like, High and Ghost? No, I feel like we've always done... I'm not trying to, like, talk myself up, but no, I, no, I feel no. like we've always done decently well. Yeah. Like, we've always done really well with shows. Yes. Like, our ticket history has always been really, 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 really good. Yeah. Um... What would you, like, say, like, what would you credit to that? Because I fan know, like, fan interaction. Fan okay. interaction and branding. Yeah. But, I mean, I spend, on an average day, probably four to six hours on social media, talking to fans, responding to people, yeah. shaking hands at shows, meeting people. Yeah. It's it's rough. It's, it's amazing. You know, yeah. it's like we're super, it's like, we're so lucky to be able to like mm -hmm. live our passion as a career. Oh, no, it's, it's like amazing. it's like almost like a privilege in some sense, but like there's so much stuff on the back end where, you know, I have a timer on my phone for social media, but it's also part of the job. I should probably do a timer because I, I do about six hours a day. Yeah. 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 And, and the responding and doing all of that is just so important because we're not in this like 
super stardom genre where I feel like that fourth wall can't be broken down. Mm -hmm. So when you're able to make that personal connection with someone, yeah. it means so much because there's not a lot of artists, I would say, at your tier mm -hmm. that take the time to do that anymore. No, it's the most important thing because without them, none of us would be doing you anything. You wouldn't be doing anything. Yeah. And none of us would without a fan base. Yeah. No, and that culture absolutely. behind what bass music is. No, none of us would be here at all. At all. And and it's crazy to see that, like, you did a few shows with the decision this fall. I did quite a few. Or, yeah, right? I don't know how many I did, but I think, I think eight. So were those, I would say, posing the question, were those, like, special experiences where you were, you were able to reflect and say, like, holy shit? The first one, yes. Yeah. I remember the first one. I, I was, it was Phoenix. That might have been the second one, but... Was that where it was? It was outside. It was outside. It was, it was, like, was, it was like 12,000 people. Yeah. There's a lot of people. Yeah. But I remember just sitting there. And at the end of the night, I was watching Excision play. And I was going, wow. I remember being 15, listening to the Shangala mix, just going, holy fuck. This is what I want to do with my life. And now I'm on his shows. Yeah. Which was, it's an incredible experience. I had the same thing with, because uh, I've been doing the virtual ride tour as well. Yes. And we did a back-to-back -back in one of the tour stops. And I was sitting there, because we all get caught up in, you know, what the life is. Yes. And then I was just sitting there doing the backpack, and I was like, holy oh, fuck. Well, it's, we're in this industry mm -hmm. where you always have to be thinking, like, four steps ahead. Mm -hmm. Like, what am I going to do next? Yeah. When's this merch drop going to come? What am I doing to prepare for tour this week? Yeah. And it's not as often as it should be where we're able to take a step back. Yeah. And be like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. like, this is fucking dope. Like, yeah. we're up in that, like, area that there, it's just such a... I wouldn't say saturated. It's such like a an industry where there are a lot of people aspiring to do what yes, you're doing 100%. right now, like more so than ever. And the, and the resources right. are there more than ever. Like when I talked to Val, it was like him and Willie were just explaining how when they came up, there was nothing. There was, you yeah. had to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You had to figure out how to make the sound. You made your own kick drums. You made your own X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And now if I want to sound like Val, or if I want to sound like Diplo, or if I want to sound like yeah. X, Y, and Z, I can just go on YouTube. It's YouTube University. Like, it's time yeah, to get, you, you know? Yeah, every single sound imaginable. So it's, it's, it's definitely, I would say, I don't know, in your opinion, would you say it's, it's harder to reach the level you're at now or easier? I have no idea. Yeah. Because, I mean, this was my first project. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that I took in a serious manner. Absolutely. Did um, you have other projects before this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one. Two. Two. Yeah. But it wasn't, like, a long time. And it wasn't super bass music focused. Mm -hmm. um, I see that super consistently in uh -huh. artists where, like, you kind of have your, when everybody starts, like, you're obviously not going to be good at it, you know? You oh, kind of have not. that project where... Mm -hmm you pump out those tracks where you're like, fuck, dude, this sounds like a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. But then once you get to that level where that music is streamable and it's reaching whatever track you're referencing yeah. or X, Y, and Z, and they start that project, I mean, Peekaboo as well. He did, like, trap music mm -hmm. and then rebranded and still yep. kept the name, but totally different sound, totally different direction. Yeah, I, I remember off. when Peekaboo first, like, popped off. I was at, I think that first EP he put out, I was at Valhalla. He wasn't playing shows yet, but that EP with the, uh, I forget all the was songs. Was it Wakan? And it was like the one that Liquid pushed. It was Liquid the first pushed. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. the first EP. And every artist in the green room in the back was like, hey, have you guys heard that fucking Peekaboo EP? And I was like, fuck, yes, we have. Because it was crazy? Yeah. Was you were so, like, what? Like, yeah, it was so good. And now there's like a trail of artists that like kind of emulate that same, that yeah. same sound. Yeah, 100%. With you all like existing in, I would say the dubstep space. Mm -hmm. It's very, I would say it's definitely a, a long road to creating like your own unique sound. Yes. And what are some like pieces from your experience or like advice that you would give to aspiring producers that are just trying to do their own thing, but they keep sounding like everyone else? Because I know so many colleagues mm -hmm. that every time they submit a sound, like a song, mm -hmm. they get back. I mean, I've, I've had the same thing said to me, like, this is sick. Mm -hmm. We already have an artist that's making music like this. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a little bit different because I, I'm touring so much that yeah. I listen to so much dub stuff. Yeah. But since Tiago's not touring, he doesn't listen to much dub stuff. Yeah. And that was something we learned from uh, Josh, a uh, figure. Because he, I love no him. one sounds like a figure besides Josh. We have a collab that we just finished. Awesome. And, like, he's just a lovely human. No, I love him. He was one of the first guys that actually we got to, like, play shows with. 
way, way back when. It was like we did a few dates with, it's crazy to think about now, but it was Figure, Midnight Tea, Space Lace is Us. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. What, that was like 2017? 20, 2016? Yeah, one of the two. Yeah. Yeah. And we were playing tiny little places, like 100 person, 200 person rooms. When you've been in it for that long and like same thing I talked to Josh about, he's like, I just implored that I'm still like making a living off this, that it's yeah, become it's as big as it fucking is. Mm-hmm. And so, so what did Josh kind of say to you about like the emulation of sound? Well, he just doesn't listen to anything really. That's yeah. dubstep. Because if you don't, I know it's, if you don't listen to other shit, you can't rip it off. Yeah. That's Even if it's true. subconsciously. Yeah. You know, which happens all the time. Which is a, which is hard because I feel like so many people, especially now, mm-hmm. even in like, I would say my generation of artists, like get into the genre because they love it. Yeah. So it's like, they're consuming all of these like different niche subgenres of bass music, mm-hmm. but it's, it's like you, you write what you're like inspired by. Like you're definitely yeah. like, I was speaking to, um, a composer. He did the Cuphead show and like some oh, SpongeBob awesome. stuff the That's other awesome. day. And he was like, you know, like, I am what my inspirations are. Mm-hmm. So it's, I feel like it's definitely good to to listen to other types of music. Oh, 100%. And then also just like, I say this all the time when I do like blog stuff, like what's your advice to up and coming producers? My advice is always work hard, fuck around, have fun, don't forget why you started. Yeah. That last one, that's yeah. really important. Mm-hmm. I feel like I speak to a lot of artists once they've done like a few seasons of touring mm-hmm. and they're like, fuck, dude, this is rough. Like, yeah, like, I mean, it's, it, we're beyond blessed to be able to do what we do and yes. make the living that we do, do what we love. But it is definitely far more taxing than I think most people understand. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And, and it's just crazy to see that, that, you know, so many people think, like, I've even seen comments about you all where it's like, where did they come from? Like, oh, they just popped out out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And it takes, like, five to ten years to get to that point where yeah. you're, I would say, nationally recognized as mm-hmm. X artist in X genre. Yeah. When did you guys take the step into touring? And did you all have, like, day jobs until a certain point? No. Well, no, we did before we started. When we decided to, like, do Hunt Goes For Real. We just said, fuck it. Yeah. And worked our asses off and ate shitty food for maybe, maybe six months, eight yeah. months. Yeah. Remember, that's during that time, we worked hard. We worked way, like, not trying to discredit us now, but we worked way fucking harder back then than we do now. It was different. You worked like, seven days a week, like, yeah, 12 like 18 to 16 hours. Days. Like, no, we were like 18 hours a day. Oh, shit. But within that first six months, we. we but you're so motivated. Oh, yeah. We wrote two years worth of music and planned out two years worth of, like, content. And then for social media back then, we were doing, it was awful. We were doing three unique Facebook posts a day, three unique Instagram posts a day. Boy, that's a lot. Oh, it was not fun. That's a shit ton. It was a shit ton. Was it just because, like, this was, like, before I was around? Was the algorithm just different? And it just wanted you to post? No, we had no idea. just, like, let me fucking get out there? Not that we don't know what we're doing still, but we just do it. Hope well, it works. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's data behind stuff and, and all that now. And we have management that directs us, but we still just do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. As you should. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like so much of it, I, I feel like now, especially in the age of social media, people are just super afraid to fail. And yeah. they're afraid to, like what you all did, throw shit at the wall and see what sticks, see what works, see what doesn't work, yeah. and be able to like go back to the drawing board mm-hmm. because so much of doing that, like paired with failure, is gonna like make you grow at like exponential rates. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And also having a team that knows what the fuck they're doing on the side of like Facebook Business Manager and like looking yeah, at all of your like analytics. Oh, I literally was just about to say that because it's a headache. I feel like every time you go on there, it changes. And it's oh like yeah, this- With the one of the guys on our team that does most of that, he was like trying to show it to me, and even he was like, "Fuck, it changed since last week." He's like, "He's like, give me a minute, I gotta find it where yeah. it is now." That's just crazy, and and. Have you all been working with the same management for the duration of your career? Yes. That's so we've been with Jake Barnett. Um, He's a shit. He is. I love Jake. He was our first manager, and we were also like his first client that started touring and doing all that type of shit. Mm-hmm. And it's been crazy to see all of us grow up. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a total of four people on the management team now. Um, 
Jake Barnett, Megan, who's our wonderful day to day, and she does awesome. so much. And then Parker Brunson and uh, Parker's Nathan cool too. Parker's a great guy. Yeah. And then uh, Nathan Navarro. And just none of what we do could be possible without each one of those people. It's it's so important to have the right team. A hundred percent. Yeah. You know, and I feel like it's kind of like a it's a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's definitely like these people become some of the closest people in your life. Yeah. And we work in an industry that is 24 seven pretty much. And yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely the thing. I was talking to a bunch of people about it. I was like, the older I'm getting, especially the more busier I'm getting now, I'm trying to find ways to relax. Cause like I wake up 7 AM and the first thing I do is go, Oh fuck. I gotta do this, 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 this. Cause I use like a, I use this app called to do us to plan all my stuff for mm-hmm. myself. I tried a bunch of other things, so do us is the easiest for me. I have an agenda. Me. You yeah. have an agenda? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I wake up. It's all, I schedule it out every Sunday for the week. Yep. And then I have, like, a monthly one. We have That's a yearly it. one, too. There's a lot of shit that we do. Well, Everything's you know. Everything's planned so far ahead now. With your team, you want to have that six month. Mm-hmm. You want to have that year plan. Yeah. And especially with releases now. God, I'm going through some shit that's, like, running my head against a wall. Because it's, like, you need, like, almost three months before yeah. a release to do it like properly. Yeah, because we're we're it. we are we're completely done with music for this year. Yeah. yeah. Completely done. So now we're we starting put to put out like two EPs. Yeah. You yeah. know? We've, we're putting out more music this year than we put out I think in the past three. That's crazy. Or four. Next year we're slowing down. Yeah. 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 Now that we're done for the music for this year, the plan is to like really take some time and write some stuff where we could really experiment and have fun and fuck around and see what we can do. Um, yeah, you have gonna, to do that. Yeah, we're going to print out shit this year that's way different. We'll see how the fans like it. We're printing out a decent amount of melodic music. I love it. Yeah, yeah I'm all for it. All for it. 100%. Yeah. Would you say, like, more melodic, like, Alenium Cavion, or, like, more melodic, like, color based chime? Neither. Neither. I'll show it to you. Okay, I, I'm excited. I don't know what it's like. I'm excited. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm all about the melodic wave. Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw that shit blow up in COVID the color base, the popcorn. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, for we sure. really come to the forefront, like the Rushdown label mm-hmm. and all that stuff. That was really exciting to see, like Ace Aura, like all those guys. I um, love Ace. Yeah. yeah. Sean's a great guy. I yeah. was actually just telling somebody, it was crazy. So years ago, have you ever played Green Elephant in Dallas? I actually am playing there in July. Okay, yeah, awesome. So it's, a, it's an awesome, awesome venue. Yeah. We were playing the Green Elephant years ago. Okay. Anyways, we were bad DJs. We didn't have enough songs. <laughs> um, so we got on the mic and we're like, hey, anyone want to DJ? Ace Aura came up way before. Oh, my God. And that's, that's where we met him. Weird. Yeah, that's how we met him years ago. That's crazy. Yeah. It's like, I want to DJ. I'm here. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm here. I got a USB. And we're like, awesome. That's amazing. I mean, that goes to show you kind of always be prepared. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like now where you're in these small venues and you're in such, like, close corners, I feel like half the attendees at shows are making music. So yeah. so it's like, it's kind of like always be there, like, have an open mind and it's just it's it's crazy to see the growth of even like venues like that like promotion companies oh like, yeah sure. i even look at like lost lands com- first year compared to this past year yeah i went the first year and i, I didn't go to any other ones and then i went to this one i was like wow this shit got worked way fucking bigger yeah oh it's absolutely insane and it's amazing like what him and his team are able to do and accomplish it's pretty fucking crazy no it's amazing it's all because of the community yes. behind it all yeah which you know if, if the community wasn't there, the community. yep, and, and that's why it's so important, and it's, like, definitely, like, running to home plate with that focus on your fan relation and mm-hmm. responding back to them and being appreciative, because you're right, they're not there, no one's there, and it's no, also, yeah. it's, like, you know, there's so many, I feel like, DJs that don't have, like, hard ticket history behind them, mm-hmm. and they just kind of, like, go and play shows, and it's, like, to build that relationship, that's, like, should be the number one, and yeah. on your tour now... You're doing your house set to open. Yes. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about that. It's just for fun. Just I literally, I start, I start every night. I got on the mic and it's like, hey guys, I'm usually how I'm ghost, but now I'm how I'm house. I'm just going to play some music I like to listen to. Have fun. Bye. And then I just sit there for an hour. And Top three house artists that you like playing in your sets. Oh, in the sets? In the sets. Uh, Joyride, Chris Lake, um, Rich Rebecca. That's so much fun. So yeah. it's kind of like that grime, bass, housey mix with some tech mm-hmm. feels. That's no, that's fire. And maybe you know, maybe down the line we get some fine house. We could, yeah. We've done a few house songs. We've released a few 
How sad yeah, time yeah. Was. Way back when, though. That'd be cool yeah. to like revamp it. And that would be awesome. Thing. Yeah, it could be super. Fun. There's there's a lot of bass acts that are doing that right now, where they're yeah. like working on just another like lane. Because I feel like too, like I was talking to somebody the other day about kind of feeling like artistically fulfilled, mm-hmm. and when you have to make the same type of music, like do you ever like do you ever talk to Tiago and he's like, I, I'm like bored of making the same fucking shit. Yeah, I feel like everyone gets like that, with, yeah. no matter what genre it is. Yeah. You know? it's, I guess it's just like finding different ways, whether it's ghosting or creating music for somebody yeah, else. Yeah, or just taking breaks. Yeah. You know, I breaks don't think enough people in the scene give themselves breaks. Because yeah. it is just such a rat race. Well, you can burn out. But the second mm-hmm. you, but the second you like walk away, I was talking to, not talking to, I saw Drezzo tweet the other day and he's like I think he had something going on with his health or whatever mm-hmm. and he's like you know one year out of the scene you lost everything and and it's like it's crazy to see from like somebody of that caliber of an artist yeah. to like come out and say some shit like that because you're yeah. like oh, shit. yeah it's rough it's rough it's definitely a 24-7 job that just keep on going keep on going would you say being on stage is your favorite thing fuck you yeah yeah it's an amazing feeling I don't get nervous at all anymore. Yeah. I still get nervous at really tiny shows. Because it's like this intimate. Yeah, I haven't done tiny shows in quite a while, but uh, a few weeks ago I did like, I opened with the Hyam House super early. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, I've never been this nervous in my life. I'm like, I've been in front of thousands and thousands yeah. of people. I'm like these 20 people look at me dead in my eyes right now, I want to die. Really? Mm-hmm. I know. It's kind of like being in a room with all your friends versus being in a room with, like, thousands of people that are all strangers. Yeah. And you're like, you kind of just go up to your thing mm-hmm. where, like, you have that personal connection early on and you're mm-hmm. like, hey, what's yeah, up? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I hope you enjoy what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. No, that's 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 fucking awesome. Um, you have sound checks, so you have to go. I do have to go. But before you go, I know you already kind of, like, put out those little pieces of advice that mm-hmm. I'll make sure to focus on. I want to hear your, like, craziest tour story like a moment where you were like holy shit this is crazy whether it's good or bad no, not saying. naming names <laughs> if it is bad like like a crazy moment where you're just like wow this is fucking insane oh i got lost at lost lines this year for quite a while that was great what mm-hmm. i was drinking those uh monaco things they had, oh yeah but i was doing half monaco i'm bad with a shot of tequila a shot of vodka and the rest were Red Bull. So we had like a Jumbo Juice kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, apparently one of the days I had about 30 of those. Oh my God. And then I was behind one of the stages and I just, I kept on walking. I was like, where the fuck am I going? And then it got to the point where I could hear more bugs than music. Yep. I was gone for about an hour and a half trying to find my way back. I think I was walking with Carmen, DJ mm-hmm. Nere, and I think, I think Willie. And we were walking along that like from where the Disciple Takeover was, mm-hmm. like, back to that alley where you got back to the artist area. Yeah, that's where I got lost. Yeah. I went some wrong way and ended up in the forest. We were like, a horror movie could be filmed mm-hmm. right here. I like, right so. right here, just yeah. off off the festival grounds. No, I, I love it. It's just kind of like you have those personal experiences. Sometimes you're like, holy shit. But the late nights at Lost Lands got insane. They did, they did. It yeah. was a great time. Everybody was in onesies. Like, everybody was just, like, yeah, fucking it was, killing it. It was such a great time. But, yeah, I got to go to sound check. Yeah. But before I go, be good. Support your friends. Put your friends on. I want to shout out Wid, Jiqui, Heritage, Wales. I love all those guys. Boys. Keep doing your thing. And everyone, keep being yourself. Gang, gang. Thank you, guys. See ya. Bye.